Hey everyone, this is Stephen Strong, the Cast Iron Cookware Channel, where you can find information to help you better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookware. Today I'm going to be doing something just a little bit different. I have been out doing a little picking here lately, and I'm going to show off some of the pieces that I picked over the last week or so. So we're going to do that coming right up. Okay, just like I said a few minutes ago, I'm going to be showing off some of the pieces that I picked here lately. And don't worry, this is not going to by any means take the place of hunting cast iron cookware in the wild. I still have a hunting cast iron cookware in the wild video coming up in about a week. We're going tomorrow to shoot it, so hopefully in about a week I'll have that out too. So let's get started with my recent finds. And I'm really tickled about some of them. And I'm just going to kind of run down what I found. I was at uh, Collinsville Flea Market about a week ago and I run across this little Red Mountain uh, two quart stew pot. I got this thing here for 10 bucks and I'm going to tell you how much I pay for this stuff because I'm really excited about it and this is a nice little Red Mountain Birmingham stove and range two quart stew pot. I didn't get the lid with it, that's the only drawback, looking for a lid now. And I thought I was really excited because I picked that one up and then I turned right around and found another one on the other side of the flea market at Collinsville. Another two quart stew pot. Now this one doesn't have the two quart written on the handle like the other and it has a little bit of rust on the inside and I believe it's going to clean up really nice. I like to show you the pieces after they get done, after they get some buzzy. Be sure to check out my Facebook page. I'll leave a link below how to get there. Check out the pictures. I put pictures on there occasionally of different items when I, when I pick them up and clean them and this and that. So I went to Mountaintop Flea Market in Altoona Sunday before church. You have to get up early to do that. And I was looking for some lids because I got a BSR Dutch oven without a bottom. And I need a lid. I needed a century, but I wound up with some Red Mountains. I asked the lady that was there uh, if they'd seen any, and they said, I know where a couple are. They're kind of rusty. You know, you can check them out. So I went over there and seen them. Now, they are kind of rusty. This one might even be a little bit pitted, but, I mean, you can clean them up and still use them. Here's a Red Mountain lid, and actually, I got another one here. It's, I believe, a Red Mountain, but it's kind of hard to tell because it is so rusty. I suppose I could kind of take a look through here and yeah it's a red mountain because the divots or the dimples are random they're not in straight lines so I got these two rusty crusty red mountain Birmingham stove and range lids and I paid $17 for both of them might have been a little too much for rusty but hey they're red mountain also while I was at mountaintop trade day I run across these two little Number five, Birmingham Stove and Range. I tell you, I went Birmingham Stove and Range nuts this weekend. I got both of these. I got a, looks like a Red Mountain and with the one with the big pour spouts. This is one thing you have, uh, some of the Birmingham Stove and Range will have the large pour spouts and some will have the smaller pour spouts. Even the Red Mountain will have large and small. Now Century is just gonna have one size, I believe. But, uh, this has got a nice little, let me let you see if you can see that, a nice little scribed looking number five on the Red Mountain, and I really like it. Now it's crusty, but like I said before, keep your eyes on my Facebook page, there'll be pics of this one after it's done. And also this one here is a Birmingham Stove and Range Century Series, and it has Made in USA, so it's a little bit newer. You can see the, the descriptive size and dimensions on this one here. Uh, that lets you know it's century. And as always, I tell you, you got to look for the handle. It's got a ridge, teardrop, hanger handle, and all earmarks of Birmingham Stove and Range. Got both these two pieces for 12 bucks. I like it. Here's another Birmingham Stove and Range with the big pour spouts. And this is a number seven right here, and it's got it's got the uh, cool little looks like a scribed seven, and uh, it's a nice pan. 
actually it's not going to take a whole lot of cleaning up but I'm going to go back to bare iron and get this in with some uh, buzzy love as well and I tell you what I love red mountain skillets the red mountain number seven is probably the best uh, skillet that Birmingham stove and range ever made and if that's your opinion as well uh, give me a shout out in the comments on it because I love number seven red mountains awesome and actually I believe I think I paid 12 or 15 dollars for this and I kind of forget what a great buy even at 20. Also at Mountaintop Flea Market I picked up this little griddle. One of my subscribers asked me one time they said does Birmingham Stove and Range make a round flat griddle? I said I'm not really sure I hadn't seen one. Hey I've seen one. So what I need to do is get you ask me the questions and then I'll find the pieces. But this is a Red Mountain griddle and it's a, a number eight but it's kind of smaller than some of the number eights but man I like it it's gonna have to be a little cleaning done to it but hey that's okay and I think I paid $15 for this one and I was excited because I thought hey finally got a BSR griddle and you know when you're looking for a piece and you look everywhere and you just can't seem to find it and you finally do you know what happens next you find another I was at an antique mall just going by after work, one that's kind of close by, Pastime Antiques. That will be from episode three of Hunting Cast Iron Cookware in the Wild. Went by there and seen this one and I thought, hey, there's another one. So I went ahead and paid the $15.99 for this one just because. So I'm excited. I got two of something I didn't even know existed. When I was at the Collinsville Flea Market, I picked up this little lid. Now it's got the earmarks of a Birmingham stove and range with the random divots in it or random uh, dimples but I knew it was not a Birmingham stove and range because it didn't have the pour spouts. But I like it and it's a very good casting even though it's probably Asian. Now people say don't buy anything Asian. One of these days I'm going to find a little bean pot, a little three-legged bean pot that this thing is going to fit and when it does I'll have me a little set. It won't be a match, but it'll work. So always pick up the lids when you get a chance because you never know when you'll find a piece to go with it. And I think I paid uh, five bucks for it. I mean, you can't beat five bucks for a lid, especially with a good casting, even if it is Asian. Also at the flea market at Mountaintop Flea Market Sunday, I was looking for another Birmingham Stove and Range eight wedge cornbread pan. And I had two that I used to for brownies and cornbread and one of my friends uh, wanted another one and, and I let it go and I should have kept it. Hey, what are you going to do? You want to share the love, right? So I sold the one that I had, one of the two that I had. I was walking by and I asked the guy, I said, how much do you want for that cornbread skillet? Oh, $10. I go, oh, $10. <laughs> so I said, let me give you the money. I'm taking this baby home. I'm just going to give a shout out to T&M Collectibles. We were there for episode 5 I believe and uh, Matthew at T&M uh, picked up these two little 6 wedge skillet. But these little 6 wedges, this is a 6 CBS which stands for cornbread skillet. This is the little sister of the 8 wedge. And if you're a Birmingham Stove and Range collector and you got the 8, you got to have the 6, at least one. If you like Birmingham Stove and Range, eventually you're going to want to get a Lady Best. Now, I know it's newer. It was made in 1976 and a little after, uh, kind of co to commemorate the uh, bicentennial of the United States. And odd thing is the number system kind of changed on these. This is number 10. Now, it's not a number 10. It's about the same size as number 8. Let me show you the size here. Get it turned right. They went ahead and went with that kind of size marking and I tell you this thing here is slick as a button and uh, one thing about it, you can't really use these in the oven but you can use them on the stove top but this is a nice piece thank you again uh, Matthew at T&M also when I was at Mountaintop Flea Market I got me a little bit more of the Birmingham Stove and Range love here and <laughs> I got carried away I'm just gonna tell you but uh, this here is a number six Lady Bess uh, skillet just like the uh, number 10 that I had earlier that was about the same size as 8 this number 6 is about the same size 
as a three, and that's what the bottom looks like. You can see it has Birmingham stove and range lettering on the back, and uh, the nice little wood handle. Now, the a few years after 1976, they started coming out with one that was more of a, a plastic. I can't think of the, the material they call it, but it was kind of a white color. Looks like a bone. Uh, I believe it may have been able to go in the oven. I'm not sure, but I know the wood handle is kind of iffy about going in the oven. You really don't want to put that in there. But if you're ever cleaning these and you got one you want to put in your electrolysis tank, this won't go in there either. But the way it does, this just screws out. There's a long screw that goes through it and uh, it screws out and the whole handle comes off. Now there's a little pin in the bottom of this thing and this pin goes into a little hole in the handle that keeps the handle from spinning on you. So that's one thing I really like about it. I was always curious about it till I actually took one of these apart. But I really love this piece. I want to give a shout out to Lynn at Lynn's Cast Iron. I'm telling you what, appreciate you lady. Uh, because you helped me find my first Lady Bess. I picked it up before I got the number 10. And you, like I said, once you find one, the second one's coming right after. I've had a few of these a Handy Dan Corn Stick Pans. And that's really what it's called, a Handy Dan Corn Stick Pan. It's made by Birmingham Stove and Range. That's kind of what the back looks like. And the handle doesn't really look like Birmingham Stove and Range but it is. It looks more like the square uh, griddle and the uh, square skillet, but there it is. I got this piece on Iron Man Auction. A great Facebook page for hunting and learning about cast iron. You don't have to buy and sell on there. You can become a member and watch what happens. You'll see a lot about pricing. You'll get an understanding about what the pieces are. Whenever I won this piece on Iron Man, I got this big Birmingham Stove and Range, oversized corn stick pan. And I'm telling you what, I've been wanting one of these for a long time. I bid it on one a little while back and got beat out. So I kind of snapped on this. This piece right here and this piece right here was in the auction together. And uh, I was so excited when this, this one came up. Now this is a Red Mountain. You look, it's got the large letters and you know that's Red Mountain. And it's a large corn stick pan. Uh, it's really... I was really excited to get this piece. And by the way, I'd sold my other two handy dance. Now I got one to replace it. Also something else I've been looking for for the whole time I've been collecting. I got this one from Lynn's Cast Iron at Mountaintop Flea Market the day I was flea marketing this weekend. And uh, I got this for $75. And it was a great buy. And uh, now the one that you get that has the gate marks and the Griswold, now they're going to be way on up there, you know, two, three, four hundred dollars. I've seen them go five hundred dollars, but uh, the new lodge is about seventy-five. The antique is a little better, and uh, it's just valued. I think it's probably, you know, somewhere around a hundred bucks, give or take. But uh, I really like it, and it's got the little L on the handle right here. I don't know if you can see it. I'll work on it and we'll see if we can't get the light to to work with us. But uh, the L, the piece that has the L is a little bit older, probably in the 50s. But uh, I really am glad that I won this piece. And after I got it, just like I told you before, you find one piece, the other one's always coming. And though it doesn't belong to me, this one actually belongs to a friend of mine and she said I got a bunt pan and she brought it to me to clean it up and get it in working order again and this one has got a little dot right here and my understanding is the ones with the L is a slightly older piece and the ones with the dot is not quite as old both of these pieces are absolutely beautiful I just want to give a shout out to Lynn's Cast Iron. She's usually at Collinsville Flea Market every Saturday. And she's usually at Mountaintop Flea Market every Sunday. You'll see her. I'll leave a picture here on this video so you know what she looks like and know what her booth looks like. And she's got great prices. And she's a sweetheart too. I've enjoyed sharing my finds with you today and I hope that you enjoyed them. And uh, 
you know, happy picking. Get out there, you know, make some connections. One reason why I give all the shout outs to the people is because your connections mean everything. Even if you don't find the cast iron, you'll find friendships. And I'm very thankful for the friends that I've made. And I hope that you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell. And uh, thank you again for watching the Cast Iron Cookware channel.